Can the power coming out of your wall affect your amp's tone? We're gonna find out. Something that I didn't really take into account or even know was a thing for that matter, when I started touring with amplifiers about, I don't know, 2015 or so, when I really started you know, getting out of the state and going around the country and stuff, was every single night my amplifier sounded different. And I could never figure out why until I realized after I got a power conditioner that the voltage coming out of the wall would have sometimes good, most of the time not good at all, effects on my power coming into my amplifier. And certain amplifiers seem to be less sensitive than others, oddly, I don't know how that works, but some amplifiers didn't really care about the voltage coming out of the wall, some did. Well, today we're gonna put that theory or the assumption to the test using the Brown Box 2 from AmpRx. Now, before we go any further, this video is brought to you by the fine folks at Sweetwater. Sweetwater has all of the things that you need for guitar, amp, bass, uh, effects, voltage regulators, and more. I will link down below in the description if you'd like to know more information about this unit. However, all thoughts and opinions are still mine. So this is the Brown Box 2 from Amp RX. Now, what this is, is it's an input voltage regulator. And what this is typically used for is running vintage amps at an optimal voltage coming out of the wall, right? So as I just mentioned, an extreme case, admittedly, however, in day-to-day -day use with a lot of vintage amplifiers, there could be a huge difference between say 122 volts and 124 volts if you're in North America and so on and so forth. The Brown Box 2 lets you kind of fine tune the voltage going to your amplifier and gives it a nice steady stream of power that it so humbly gobbles up and spits out as sweet, sweet music when you plug into it with your guitar. However, I think today we're gonna to use this in kind of the opposite fashion. I wanna see how much the voltage change affects two different amplifiers that are pretty sensitive to power. And we're gonna see if it changes the tone and if so, how much and in what ways does it affect the tone? So I'm gonna hook up the Brown Box 2. All right, so I have my brand new Ultra Series Jazz Master from Fender. I am plugged into, we're gonna start with my Orange Rockerverb Mark III 50 watt because this is the very amplifier that I used to tour with and I used to have a lot of problems with, with the power. So I have the Brown Box 2 here. Now we have active reduction and then we have voltage attenuation. Think of attenuation as severity of the voltage that we are reducing, okay? So I have this to the max attenuation once we get out of bypass. So in bypass, it's not doing anything. We're feeding the, the orange 120 volts and it sounds like this. I'm going to start reducing the voltage to the amplifier. Right now we're at 120, 110. Can you hear a difference? I feel a huge difference. Um, it's sagging out. I can tell the attack is getting a little softer. To my ears right here in the studio, I can hear some top end kind of rolling off as well. Let's go down some more, shall we? So now we're going to hit, it's just 109, just, just one volt more. I don't think we're gonna hear much of a difference. That basically feels and sounds the same. Let's do, let's go down one more notch. 
Now we're at 106 volts. Started at 120. Do we hear a difference? <laughs> The amp to me feels slower. It feels it feels tired. It feels like the tubes need to be changed out or something. Also, additional top end has been lost and maybe some volume. Not sure about the volume, but the top end and the, the, the response is definitely slowed down. Let's go to the last notch of reduction. 105 volts, 104, 105, coming from 120. I'm, this probably feel pretty saggy. That is, <laughs> we're, we're psyching out this amp pretty hard. Now I'm gonna strum a chord, I'm gonna play a little bit and then I'm gonna turn the active reduction off. Let's see if we can hear it going back to 120 volts, right? What differences do we hear there? big difference. This is a preamp gain based amplifier design. Let's switch to my Marshall 1987X, which is all power amp. Let's see how it affects the tone with that amplifier, all right? So I'm gonna switch these around, be right back. Okay, so I have the 1987X Plexi hooked up. Now this is, this is a non-master volume design, meaning the gain that you're hearing is just the power tubes being driven and broken up. This is my bass tone. Now let's do the same thing we did with the orange, noting if we hear any differences or not. I feel a uh, less spiky top end going on, which I, I am okay with. Like this sounds pretty good to me. Let's go down a notch. Not much of a difference there. Let's do one more. Now we're gonna be at 106 volts from 120. This actually sounds pretty good. The spiky top end is gone. It's smoothed out. That's pretty interesting. And no wonder, no wonder uh, Eddie Van Halen uh, did this with his Marshall back in the day. Let's do the very last amount of reduction down 104 volts. Let's see. Let's see how we how we like this. fizzy and it kind of is a kind of a flubby mess here. I actually liked it most on 
the second to last amount of reduction now. Let's go ahead and play a little bit and then turn it off and on to note the differences in more of an immediate fashion. <laughs> It's less severe than the orange, but I'm noting some top end uh, reduction, which I'm not mad about, to be totally honest, and some volume reduction, really. It's pretty interesting. If I had to choose, I would put this amp right about here. <laughs> I just like the, how the gain sounds and how the amp feels at this setting. So yeah, the more you know. So what do I think? Honestly, this thing is $399. And if I had a bunch of vintage amplifiers, I would definitely be looking into something like this because the other alternatives is just really praying. <laughs> you know, as far as controlling the input and the output of the voltage going to your amplifier, this is a great cost-effective solution. I know $399 is not an insignificant amount of money. However, if you have, you know, a super rare, super high value amplifier, of course I would spend the $399 to put this in between the wall power and the amplifier. So take that for what you will. Um, you touring guys that are still touring with amplifiers, I hope you've learned something from this as well. I know I did. I will link down below if you'd like to know more about the brown box or anything amp rx related shout out to our sponsor sweetwater and with that you've been wonderful i've been fluff thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time